these cryptos are doomed to fail. I want to be very careful because this is not something I talk about much on the channel. These cryptos are not cryptos I talk much about on the channel, but they have become really popular. Some crypto YouTubers only cover these types of cryptos. And we have some news coming from a lawyer that has worked with one of the biggest cryptos in this whole sector that says that these cryptos are not going to work. They're going to go down to zero unless they change. So I want to cover this. Of course, do your own due diligence. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification underneath the video. And I also want to thank NordVPN, but we'll talk more about that later in the video. Now, I have been very clear over the last couple months and over the last six months plus that I think Bitcoin dominance is going up, that my portfolio is mostly Bitcoin in cryptocurrency. Yeah, I'm also well diversified outside of that, but I think Bitcoin is by far the safest option. There have been certain cryptos that I've just stayed away from in this bear market. And 95% plus of my portfolio is in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Then I have some smaller cryptos that I am interested in. Now, that being said, I've held other cryptos in the bull market. Bull markets are different than bear markets. And there's something that... uh Oh, well, there's one type of cryptocurrency that people have been talking up a lot for the next bull run. And I just want you to be careful because of something that just came out. So one of the biggest crypto, uh, one of the biggest crypto categories is gaming. And a lot of people think that this is going to take over, right? They're some of the largest crypto YouTubers that talk specifically about gaming. And while I do think there is a lot of potential in there, there's a lot of risk, for a lot of these cryptocurrencies, they are highly inflationary and their models don't really make sense over the long term, at least in my eyes. Now, uh, part of that is just because they create these games that aren't super fun to play, but a lot of them just try to make you money. But by making a lot of players money, it devalues the cryptocurrency or makes it harder to get the cryptocurrency, which makes less people make money, which makes people leave the game. And we've seen this in crypto gaming before. So it's difficult, but you can still play it and make money from it. I'll say how I think you can do that later. But what came out recently was that the president of blockchain at Gala recently came out and said why just about every game should have a secondary token, why it makes sense to have a secondary token. And he goes through this whole explanation, but in it, he says something really interesting. He says, so if you take that spend and say 15% of that gets distributed back to the players, it does one of two things. What's so interesting about this is, without going through the rest of the article, he's talking about only distributing 15% of what the game makes back to the players. A lot of people were pissed off about this and asked him about it, saying, where's the 85% going that you're not paying us? And he said, well, basically, it's really expensive. We have a large team. Uh, so they're funding the game with the tokens, with the NFTs. And he goes through this example with spider tanks where you can make $8 per day. The problem is that you basically can't get rewards if you sell, right? You can continue to make $8 per day, but not if you start selling. The problem with this is if people are just playing to get the money and you can't get the money if you sell, continues to cause people to play the game, never be able to cash out. And then eventually when people start cashing out, that could really push down the price and that causes a cascading effect where more and more people need to sell. And then at this point, these players have been playing for a long time, never getting a dollar out, and the price is crashing. So it's all paper gains up until this point, which is really scary for someone that spent a ton of time playing a game to make money. Now, this came uh, right around the same time that we got some news from the Gala uh, X lawyer. And he said, here's my take on Web3 economies and tokens. Disclaimer, I'm not an economist. This is based on my own theories, experience, and calculations. This is an opinion. And he goes through why he thinks a lot of crypto gaming coins are going to just die off. Now, I want to thank OnChain Gaming because they inspired this video. They do a lot of uh, crypto gaming content. So shout out to them. Go check them out. And I do want to take a second to thank Nord. And then we're going to get into why this is doomed. 
Now, over the last year, we've talked about how you need to protect yourself by using cold storage wallets. We've talked about that because of so many exchanges blowing up. Now, today I want to talk to you very briefly about something else that you should get to protect yourself, and that's a VPN. So I did not use a VPN for the longest time. I just had my information out on the web. I thought, who really cares? But then once I got into crypto, you notice that I stopped talking about how much I was worth how much crypto I had, that kind of thing, because I didn't want people to know. Because with real estate or money in the bank or stocks, you can't really steal that very easily, but if you get held up at gunpoint and you have some crypto on a hot storage wallet, you can be in trouble. You can see here, I'm unprotected right now. I live here in Holland, Michigan. I don't want you guys to know that. Here's my IP address, here's my uh, ISP. I, I don't want this out on the web, but people can get that information if I'm not protected. Now, I can do something as easy as this. Click France and then I'm protected. If I reload the page, this is great for anyone trading in crypto because you don't want people to know where you are, what you're doing, what you're doing on the web, and what websites you're using. We know, especially with some of these exchanges, right? They don't have your best interest in mind all the time. So we want to protect our information and it can be really useful for other things as well. Not just that, but you can get on websites that you wouldn't normally be able to get on. Also, when you're overseas, you can get back on websites that you can't get overseas. I've been traveling, <laughs> even just something as simple as watching a show. I was gone for one month and I could not watch a show that I was totally hooked on for that entire month unless I had VPN. And I had VPN at the time. Now, with this link underneath the video, because I am sponsored by v NordVPN right now, you can get a 30 day money back guarantee. And when you sign up for a year, you can get three months off. If you sign up for two years, you can get four months off. So I would get that it's $3 a month and it protects you during the next bull run. I think it, if you're not doing this and you're not having a cold storage wallet device, you're really doing it wrong. I think you are opening yourself up to losing big in the next bull run. So check that out underneath the video. So Jesse says game tokens in general, Games that create tokens for the sole purpose of rewarding users have created tokens that are doomed to fail. Rewarding users itself is not a sustainable model. Without someone con uh, constantly pulling the strings like the Fed, you have a token with no actual use case, only surviving so long as the creator goes to extraordinary means to keep the value of the token. Everyone who earns a token has the goal of making money and at least cashing some out. The addition of sinks and withdrawal limits is only a temporary fix. A game company will only support a token for as long as it makes economic sense for themselves, which often isn't long enough for people to make their money back. This is a good point with free to play games. Like let's say you play Clash Royale. I play that every once in a while you know that you're not spending money when you start the game and then only if you want to spend money later on you realize that you're not going to make the money back it's five dollars and it's just for fun you realize that that's just a loss you're not coming into the game saying hey i need to spend three hundred dollars on an nft and then it will allow me to earn ten dollars a day but then the token price continues to fall down and then you think okay maybe uh, it will go back up this is a good time to buy the dip and you can just dump more money and more money in while the token falls down, like this isn't the best example, but Gala's price, right? This looks like a lot of gaming cryptos. It's down 95%, 98%. So you have to be careful with this. The alternative, there is zero reason that a similar game can't be successful with an already existing token with utility. The main reason why a centralized company wouldn't want to do that is greed. New tokens come in with new money-making alternatives. The alternatives to that is that the company actually do a revenue share with its customers from the money it takes in. If you don't oversell items and you distribute a portion of your revenue to users, what you could have is a very easy to implement and maintain economic model. Then if the game is good enough, you will have both people playing the game for money and also just playing for the game and being able to find success in both. This is something that I've said for a long time when talking about gaming, that you need to have games that are actually fun, right? They're addicting naturally, not just because you're trying to make a dollar here or there. There are better ways to make money than crypto gaming, right? You could just go work a job and make way more money. So it actually has to be fun to play. Unfortunately, money, uh, many Web3 gaming companies are short-sighted and see short-term profits. And the sad news is that those users who overpaid for NFTs are now relying on a token with no utility to make their investment back. 
and will be left holding the bag when it's no longer economically feasible for the Web3 game company to support the token any longer. I fully believe the game can find long-term success for the company and the customer by creating a revenue share type model where the company recycles a portion of their revenue through to the users. This may not make the most money up front and will likely not be enough to fundraise a gaming a game's development, but that is good in my opinion. So rather, game companies should fundraise in a new way other than uh, selling overpriced items. They can even avoid the traditional VC routes. They can sell royalty rights in, in, in individual games to investors, non-accredited and accredited, to raise the funds separate, separate the funding from the game and the game economy. So a lot of these gaming companies will come up with some new crypto to have as a um, as some kind of fundraising for their project, right? So you go and spend Ethereum, you get an NFT for their game, um, and then you can get back their own token in the game. That's kind of just creating money out of nowhere and trying to prop up this economy uh, or try to prop up this crypto. So it is something that we should be paying attention to in the future if there are games that break this mold and decide to use an already existing token with utility. Now, of course, they do need to make money somehow, right? There are different ways to do that. But I'd really like to see some kind of new gaming uh, cryptos that implement in this way that are actually fun to play. I think that's something that obviously needs to change by the next crypto bull run now that's something that's really obvious for the next crypto bull run if you think crypto gaming is going to do well we actually need games that are fun to play if you want to really catch on now of course crypto gaming uh or gaming cryptos will probably do well on the next bull run no matter what but will they just bleed very quickly if more people come in to play the games it's going to dilute the share uh the the crypto holders or it's going to dilute the rewards unless people are going to actually join. So you're just going to have these big boom and bust cycles. And I would rather invest in something like Bitcoin or Ethereum that have a fixed supply that are not diluting and do not have such a difficult to understand economy. Let me know your thoughts on this, though, underneath the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want me to dive into this in future videos a little bit deeper, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.